anyway on the floor behind me you can see i've got a few bits i'll turn around and show you what i've got new mintex brake pads for the fiesta in this box for the fiesta we have some drilled and grooved discs just got my 1970s ever ready torch with a led bulb in to shine some light yeah, I'll throw up a picture of the silencer that I'll be using here. Then I pushed under the axle stand. I removed the spring clip off the brake caliper. I also gave it a spray and a wipe down with brake cleaner. Hello, welcome to this video. I'm Dave. The weather's not been too great for any of us in the UK recently. Uh, as most of you know that watch my videos, I do all my jobs outside. I've had uh, quite a lot of frost and rain and uh, it's not nice being out here. Anyway, on the floor behind me you can see I've got a few bits. I'll turn around and show you what I've got. Yeah, down here we've got oil and filters for both the Fiesta and Mondeo. Got some new Mintex brake pads for the Fiesta in this box. For the Fiesta, we have some drilled and grooved discs. Yeah, again, if you watch my videos, you'll know that when I was working on the Fiesta a couple of months ago, I noticed the discs were worn down, the grooves had gone. So I put my old discs and pads on that I'd kept, but just uh, upgrading back to these. We also have some more, I think it's three mil thick, this one, checkered plate, aluminium. To uh, finish off the theme in the Fiesta, I'll show you that in a second. And in this bag here, we have a load of coach bolts and nuts to fit the checkered plate. Yeah, as you can see in the front of the Fiesta, I have the checkered plate. And I also have some in the boot, but I can't get to the boot at the moment. But what this is for, there's the rear floor pans. So uh, yeah, I'm going to finish off the theme of that. Looks like it's a bit wet down there. <laughs> On the rear floor pans. Yeah, there you go over there. The boot is also done around the spare wheel. Yeah, while I'm doing the Fiesta with this checker plate on the floor, I've uh, got a few other jobs to do. It's due for MOT soon, the end of the month. As long as it's back on the road by April time, I'm not too concerned because I found a few bits of welding that need doing as well. Just got my 1970s Ever Ready torch with a LED bulb in to shine some light. There is one hole in the driver's side floor pan. And if I can focus in down here, can we focus? Down here where the rusty line is, that's actually a hole. So I'm going to have to take this floor plate out. So I've got enough bolts to put fresh bolts in here. I'll probably have to grind these out, they've been in a while. And uh, there's a little bit more welding I'll show you. Yeah, and there's this one here underneath. I'll just try and get my finger in there as well. It's going down now. Shine the torch on it. That one there, it's just on the subframe. Just uh, realised that one might be slightly difficult to get into. I don't know if I'll have to drop the subframe, whatever, but I'll get that sorted. Yeah, about the subframe welding, I have spoke to the MOT tester and he says it's perfectly fine for me to weld the subframe because uh, I've read a bit of different stuff on the internet that you can't weld subframes. So I spoke to the MOT tester and he assures me that on this vehicle it's absolutely fine to do that. Yeah, and also I found, let's get the screwdriver, sorry. Where I'm pointing with the screwdriver here, as uh, that bit needs welding. I'm going to have to take out the fuel tank for that because the, let's see if I can get under here. Well, there's the fuel tank. There's the rear axle bolts on and it is just above there, here's, here's the rear axle. Fuel tank's just behind there. 
So yeah, I'll uh, drop the axle, remove the fuel tank and sort all that out. Yeah, and I will have a really good look and perk around the Fiesta under there while I'm doing all this work. Like I say, as long as it's back on the road by April, I'm not too bothered. It's uh, weather dependent at the moment as well, obviously. If it wasn't weather dependent, I could crack on and do it quite quickly. Um, yeah, as long as the car's back on the road by sort of April time when the shows and the drag strip open up, that's fine by me. Yeah, and finally down here, we have a standard rear exhaust for a Mac 3 Mondeo. Don't worry, I'm not going standard. I do like the noise. <laughs> We also have two of these, I can't remember what you call them properly, ball and flare joints. Where the rear meets the midsection on the car, I already have one of these. I want to keep the rear section that I'm taking off in case I don't like the new setup that I'm making. So I've got one of these that I can use there and connect to what I already got. And the other one will go about here because this will be chopped off with the grinder and uh, I will be fitting a Hornet exhaust silencer with a three inch tip. Yeah, I'll throw up a picture of the silencer that I'll be using here. On a standard Mark III Mondeo, the exhaust comes out of this side, the passenger side. So the exhaust I've just shown you, the Hornet exhaust will come out this side. I'm then going to also get a double valve system. I'll throw up a picture here of the double valve system that I'm going to use. Yeah, so as I say, the Hornet silencer will come out here. When I press the button on the double valve system, it will shut this side off and it will open the other side, which will then be just a straight through pipe, no silencer. It will have exactly the same three inch tip on that side as the Hornet silencer on this side. Like I say, if I don't like this setup, I will have this one that's on at the moment to put straight back on. Although it does need a new Y section welding in because that's been patched up a time or two. Yeah, and I'll just throw up a picture here of the new Y section that I'll be getting to weld in place because I will be keeping this rear exhaust set up as a spare or like I say, I can put it straight back on if I don't like my new setup. Right, so with all that being said, I'm going to now start some of the jobs. Hopefully today I'm going to get the oil and filter changed on both the Mondeo and the Fiesta and get these discs and pads fitted on the Fiesta. Yeah, I change the oil and filter every 6,000 miles in my cars. So we'll start here by starting both the cars to warm them up. If you warm the engine up, the oil will drain out much easier. and start that one so it's also warm and while the cars are both warming up I'll tidy some of this stuff away that I'm not going to do today the exhaust and the checker plate Once the engine was warm, I turned the engine off, I jacked up the driver's side. And slid an axle stand underneath. And then next, I opened the bonnet. We have the sockets, the oil, the filter. The pans to collect the oil, the oil filter wrench, funnel, empty tubs to put the old oil in, and brake cleaner. Nearly ready. Next, we got out the mats and brought the tools and the pans across that I need to use. Just put the final mat down. I took the sump bung out and drained the oil into the pans. Then I removed the oil filler cap just to give more flow through to drain the oil. 
Next I poured the waste oil into a tub ready to take to the skip. I smeared some fresh engine oil on the sump bung washer. I fitted the sump bung finger tight and then I got my ratchet and nipped it up. Then I cleaned the excess oil with some brake cleaner. With the filter wrench on a ratchet, I loosened the oil filter. Next, I filled the new oil filter up with some fresh engine oil. I always do this to save the engine having to fill a dry filter up. And then I smeared some fresh engine oil on the oil filter seal. Then I fitted the oil filter, you just do this hand tight. Again with some brake cleaner I cleaned off any excess oil. Next I removed the axle stand and let the jack down ready to top up with fresh engine oil. Using a funnel I put in the fresh engine oil. Next I checked the level on the dipstick. I pulled the dipstick out, wiped it and re-dipped it to get a true reading. Looks okay, spot on. Then I refitted the oil filler cap. I put the ignition key in and started the engine. We had good oil pressure. After turning the engine off and leaving it for 10 minutes, I rechecked the oil level. Again, I double dipped the dipstick to get a true reading. Found it a little low. So again, with the funnel, I topped it up with some more fresh engine oil. A quick check on the dipstick again, perfect. So I removed the funnel, refitted the oil filler cap. I then quickly jacked up the car again. I pushed under an axle stand. I then checked for any leaks on the oil filter and sump bung. All good. Then I removed the axle stand and let the jack down. Finally, shut the bonnet. Next, I pulled the Fiesta forward and repeated the same process with the Fiesta. Now, onto the brakes. I started by removing the centre cap and cracking off the wheel nuts. Next, I jacked up the car. And I removed the wheel. Then I pushed under the axle stand. Next, with a screwdriver, I prized the brake pads apart to push the piston in slightly on the caliper. Then with my bar I cracked off the bolts holding the caliper in place.
Then I hung the caliper up out of the way, taking any strain off the brake pipe. Next, I removed the old brake disc and gave the hub a wipe. It's pretty clean here anyway, as I fitted these discs not too long ago. Then I put some fresh copper grease on the hub. I removed the spring clip off the brake caliper. I removed the brake pads. I removed the brake fluid reservoir cap. Using a brake caliper tool, I wound the piston fully in, ready for the new pads. I cleaned the excess brake dust off the caliper. I also gave it a spray and a wipe down with brake cleaner. I put a smear of copper grease on the edge of the new brake pads. and I fitted the new pads into the caliper. New brake discs have a coating of oil on to stop them rusting. So with some brake cleaner and some clean kitchen roll, I gave both sides of the braking area of the discs a good clean. placed the new disc onto the hub. I fitted and bolted the brake caliper back into place. Next I tightened the bolts up with the ratchet. And nipped them up with the bigger bar. I refitted the spring to the brake caliper. Next I went to the cockpit of the car and pumped the brake pedal. Then I removed the axle stand and refitted the wheel. I let the jack down and nipped up the wheel. Checking the wheel nuts are tight and pop the centre cap back on. And then I repeated the process on the passenger side and refitted the brake fluid cap. We have stickers for sale now, £2 if you see me in person, add a pound for postage, UK mainland, and please remember I get no profit out of these, it covers the price of the stickers and the remainder goes to the National Artistic Society. Yeah, please read the description below to see how to get the stickers from me. As you can see, it's getting dark now. We're just uh, having a quick test drive to make sure that the brakes work and there's a pedal, which there is. Obviously, they need bedding in a little bit for a couple of hundred miles. Yeah, so that went okay. I'm back home now. I'm going to end this video now. If you do enjoy our videos, thumbs up. If not, thumbs down. If you do enjoy them, Please remember to hit the subscribe button to see more videos coming in. Thanks for watching.